Hey you guys, so Sandro here, and today I'm gonna be doing an educational slash uh, blog slash commentary video in regard to a video from the channel Cody's Lab, and this is it. I think it is along the lines of uh, co welding in a vacuum. Now, uh, if y'all have been keeping up with uh, Cody's videos, and uh, I, I really like his channel, by the way. Uh, has a lot of interesting things and all. Um, he uh, he's been covering the topic of cold welding, and um, the first video I saw of him uh, touching on the topic, he had two pieces of indium and they pretty much got uh, stuck together. He um, he, I don't remember if uh, uh, what he did, but he uh, kind of uh, mashed them up and uh, twisted them and and they actually um, bonded okay and um, the thing is that I, I have an interesting hypothesis and the thing is that um, I think there, there's a variety of factors I have to do for one there's the whole deal with uh, with the air or oxide layer between the two materials Otherwise, it's just like having two pieces of Play-Doh. I, I hope you all know what Play-Doh is. It's just this clay-like material that you play when uh, when you were kids and everything. But anyway, uh, if you get those, those two pieces, if you leave them uh, on, they won't stick until unless you leave it in there for a while. They'll slightly stick in them. And uh, if you mash them up, they'll, if you want to unstick them, it's going to be kind of hard. Now, um... The thing about metals is that metals are malleable and the thing is that there's some metals that are so malleable and so soft that if you uh, if you put apply enough force uh, and because of the fact they're soft bits and pieces will actually stick together now keep in mind this isn't the same as uh, as if you were to melt it down and actually have a bond, those are like much stronger bonds. And um, and in reality, I kind of get what uh, what Cody's trying to do, and uh, I actually have seen this something synonymous to uh, cold welding, but not quite. It actually requires mechanical energy. And th there's a video, and I'm gonna put a Put a link in the description to this video and this is a video in which uh, there's a guy that gets a ball of uh, aluminum foil a huge ball of aluminum foil like a bunch of like uh, aluminum foil just uh, just wrapped around into this thick ball that you can't crush by hand so he puts it into this uh, this large uh, hydraulic press that uh, puts who knows how many tons of force uh, to the um, aluminum ball to crush it and he, he crushes it, it ends up in a flat sheet he bends it and repeats the process over and over to the point where it gets to what looks like a solid piece of aluminum and uh, and it's really interesting and the thing is uh, I think uh, Cody's trying to go along those lines in regard to that but here's uh, here's a formula that uh, I I came across when I uh, was taking uh, physics uh, and this is uh, uh, electrophysics so this formula that you see right here this is what they call Coulomb's law and if you uh, see the formula, and this formula is, um, it basically goes the absolute value of the quantity of coulombs of charge one times the absolute value of the quantity of coulombs of charge two divided by the distance between both charges squared times what they call coulombs constant which is 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 newtons times meter squared per coulomb square. Now, there is something about this that has to do with the whole deal with like materials bonding 
or the reason why things don't exactly stick when you just put them on top of another unless of course you're talking about like sticky material which does have to do with uh, electromagnetism bonding and things like that so getting back to our formula you might ask how does Coulomb's law relate to what Cody's doing and the answer is that it is actually one of many factors in metals since they have the property of being able to conduct electricity that means that the conductor has free electrons they are able to give up electrons being that the case that means that there are aggregate charged particles now this is also influenced by environment it influences what polarity how much charged particles or free electrons it has if you want to know more about this i suggest you go check out the free electron model i'll post a link in the description but for the most part materials that don't readily stick when they are stacked on top of one another usually are mostly composed of particles of the same polarity that means that there is a repulsive force acting upon both objects in the space between them which distance between them usually ranges in microns that's of course not considering minor factors like the fact that the surface of most objects at that micro scale is not uniform regardless of how well polished it is it affects the acting force due to the variable distance which is usually negligible so if we take our formula and apply a little calculus in this case limits let's say that our distance approaches zero assuming that charge one and charge two which are both objects is a non-zero quantity then the amount of force between them will approach infinity now infinity is a dubious quantity to have for an acting force found in nature however we have to keep in mind that infinity is not a number it is a symbol used in math and science to represent large quantities or in this case represents the convergence to a large quantity so what this is showing is that the closer both objects are to each other the stronger the acting force this is the force that you have to overcome in order to get objects to bond to each other whether it is through a mechanical force thermal energy electricity radiant energy or chemical reactions or even radiation in nuclear physics the same principle goes only that the intensity of the force is greater since it's nuclear fission or fusion meaning that the proximity of the nucleus is greater making the distance between both particles smaller meaning greater repose of force to overcome up until it's close enough for the strong nuclear force to take over and counteract the repulse of nuclear force now before i continue keep in mind like i said the repulsion of the electromagnetic force is only one of many factors responsible for why things don't readily bond even though it's the force responsible for objects not um, being able to readily bond is also the force responsible for why things chemically bond in the first place why things stick to e each other depending on the material of course but aside from that there's other factors to consider for example electron configuration things having to do with electron spin some materials are either paramagnetic or diamagnetic meaning they either are attracted to the magnetic field or they repel the magnetic field other factors include chemical composition density phase of the material as well as many other environmental factors but anyway getting back to what cody's doing uh my best guess in regard to the two pieces of indium and the pieces of gold uh, bonding to each other is that the two pieces of indium it the reason why they bonded it mainly has to do not so much because of the dissipation of the layer 
of air between the two pieces but it has to do more with the fact that the amount of force you apply to it also the malleability of the two materials if you look at the two pieces of gold they're not as massive uh, even though they're uh, the density of gold is a lot higher than uh, indium but anyway that's uh, that's just my comment in regard to this you know? but anyway guys let me know what y'all think and before I conclude this uh, I just want to say I know I am a little bit late at posting this video prior to when he released the vacuum cold welding video I know that he's already like several videos ahead and uh, keep in mind that I'm not as quick as releasing videos as he is uh, mainly has to do with the editing and and also even though I have a good amount of time here in YouTube uh, I'm not that experienced like most youtubers but uh, when I do videos I take my time to edit them and uh, try to make them as uh, presentable um, and more um, visually appealing as I can but anyway guys thank you for watching please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time and pledge to my Patreon uh, later.